Yeah, let's go ahead and get started with Coach Johnson. Obviously, the game tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. on SEC Network Plus against Kennesaw State. We'll get an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll take uh, questions after that. So I'll turn it over to Coach. Johnson. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We, um, we're excited to um, open our season officially uh, on tomorrow night um, against Kennesaw State, a uh, team that's going to be a well-coached team. Uh, Al Skinner's, you know, obviously coached in college for a very, very, very long time. Um, tremendous uh, track record in terms of being a college basketball coach. So obviously he has a ton more experience than we do on the sidelines, and that's something that um, hopefully we can overcome on tomorrow night. Uh, our guys have been working hard um, in practice and trying to get better and better every day. A lot of competition been going on for a couple of spots on our team and spots in the rotation. and. Uh, we got a little bit more figured out than when I saw you guys the last time, but we don't have it all figured out yet. But uh, it's, it's just extremely gratifying for me knowing that, um, that I'm personally going to be introduced as the um, new head men's basketball coach officially tomorrow night. And the era, the Coach Avery's era is going to start, and hopefully it'll be f fast and furious and Hopefully we'll be able to make some shots and take advantage of some situations. And, um, and hopefully our fans will see that we're laying the foundation and trying to get the program uh, jump started and headed in the right direction. You know, good questions. Raise your hand if you have one. We'll start with Alex and go to Mike. You kind of touched on that a little bit, but you obviously had the exhibition game. You kind of got the maybe the butterflies out right away. But what are you expecting from this first First time you step out on the floor as Alabama's men's basketball coach. Well, I'm expecting our guys to go out there and have some fun. Um, you know, for us, we're a new team. We're an underdog. Um, and we just got to go out there and do what we do, play our style of game, play our pace. Uh, they're crystal clear on what we're trying to do defensively. Uh, so it's just a matter of executing it. But unfortunately, we're not playing crimson against white. We're playing against another team that – you know, has an outstanding uh, point guard and and uh, some other returning players that that could actually be playing here at Alabama. So, you know, we got our work cut out for us. Michael, yeah, I guess you talked about talk about stuff you learned from that exhibition game. What exactly did you did you see? What what did you pick up on in that night? Well, I think more than anything, we tried a lot of different rotations, and you know, we I'm big on three-man, five-man combinations of who function better than others. And um, I, I, I'm a big matchup guy. And, you know, there are certain matchups that, that's better for us than others. And um, so we learn more about who we think can play better for us to start the game and, you know, who can come off the bench and, and fill a role for us. No, we know Jimmy's locked in at the five. You said Redden's locked in at the two. Mm -hmm. I would guess Shannon's locked in there at the four. So who? How's the point guard in the small four? You, you know, on that? TV when I was w with the media, they said, "Never say uh, you, you think something, or never say, well, I guess something." So um, yeah, we'll give the starting lineups out on tomorrow. But um, you know, Shannon's been progressing well. Uh, he's pretty much a hundred percent. You know, we had a grueling practice on yesterday, and, um, you know, we were here a long time, and he went through all of it. And that was a good sign, and when, you know, when he came in for treatment this morning, he recovered well. So uh, Shannon's doing better, and he and Mike's been really fighting hard uh, for that starting four spot. We'll go back over Michael, and we'll go to Chris. Hey, so how long, you, just to follow up on the question, the answer you have, how long does it take usually for you to, to get into that – comfort of like the rotations and the matchups and you know to where you know you, it sounds like you do some experimenting how long how long do you think it should I'm, be? I'm hoping sometime after Thanksgiving you know we'll be comfortable with the rotation depending on you know injuries and performance and um yeah so I'm, I'm hoping sometime after we get back from that Thanksgiving trip where we're going to play three games in four days that we'll have a clearer picture and and be more comfortable with uh roles and rotations and and sometimes we may change it just depending on the matchup. Um, 
You know, some teams like to start two small guards. Um, we have the flexibility to, to do that, uh, to start two point guards, rather. So, you know, we, we, we have some different options. Coach, whether it's after Thanksgiving or whether it's after this year, when you get into the numbers that you're happy with, what type of rotation do you like to go? Is it, is it eight, nine, ten guys? Is it, is it eight or fewer? What do you like to play when you've got it? Yeah, I, I like the number eight or nine. That's what I'm really comfortable with. I like to see guys that can – I like the really good players to be able to play big minutes. You know, I, I like to see them out there against some second units. Um, so I would say yes, eight or nine. But believe me, if we have a team that's 10 or 11 deep and we're capable of doing it, I'm flexible to go there. But I, I think if you look at a lot of the recent championship teams, um, they, they got a strong eight-man rotation. You can't speak to everything, but obviously signing day was yesterday. Can you kind of speak about your two new additions and uh, within the rules about mm -hmm. one other? Yeah, unfortunately, we can talk about our two guys. You know, Armand Davis is, we think, one of the top junior college prospects and, and really top prospects for the 2016 class in the country. Um, so whether he's in high school or – junior college or whatever you know he's he's an outstanding young man uh long uh, athletic wing player that can shoot the ball from here to idaho okay and you know we need that type of scoring and shooting and underrated ball handler uh his mom is a joy to spend time with uh so we enjoyed having him on campus and you know he, he saw the magic that's here at alabama and uh, he committed to us and uh, followed through and, and signed. Uh, Braxton Key, uh, he was one of the first guys I recruited when, when I got the job. And, um, you know, Bob Simon knew a lot about him as well as Antoine Petway knew about um, our mind. So Bob showed me some video on Braxton. I was like, wow, you know, this guy can do it all. You know, he passed dribble and shoot, uh, multi-positional player, uh, high basketball IQ, great size. Um, you know, we've enjoyed getting to know his mom also and his dad and, and um, you know, just two quality, high character young men that we've added to our program that's extremely talented. Coach, can you talk about the difference from coaching NBA players to college players? When you're in the NBA and you're dealing with men, you can talk to them and treat them like men. What's, what's kind of the difference and, and, and what do you talk, talk about? Well, one of the differences is, you know, like tomorrow, I'm used to having a 10 o'clock shoot around in the morning. And, uh, you know, our shoot around has to be a lot later in the afternoon because my, my kids have to go to class and that's something that I didn't have to deal with. Or, you know, you can, you had the flexibility of leaving on a road trip morning, noon, and night. You know, now, again, we got class situations and tests and stuff that we have to deal with. So, but fortunately, like I said earlier, we have longer practices. Um, you know, on average, we only have about two games a week, which, you know, add up to about 31 games a year and instead of 82 games a year. And, um, you know, you just get a lot more quality time together. And, uh, you know, kids, these kids are like sponges. They just want to get better. They want to learn. And when they learn it, uh, they, they get really excited about it. So. You know, I, I feel more like I'm in a, a true father role now and mentor. And, and, uh, but the great thing about it, I get a chance to teach every day in my laboratory called our practice gym. Just one more. What's your game day kind of routine? Do you have something that you like to do to get your own mind right, to kind of prepare yourself for the rigors of a game? Yes, I have my routine. I've had to change it a little bit again because of the – you know, in college, but, you know, I like to eat at a certain time. You know, my wife understands there are certain things that I want to eat on game day at a certain time. And, um, you know, the, yeah, I have, you know, sometime maybe a good power 20 minute nap. It does wonders for me because I don't sleep at night. So, um, yeah, I have a routine. I meet with our team. I meet with our team chaplain. 
for a little session, prayer session, about two hours before the game. So yeah, I got a couple of different things I, that I have within my routine. Sometime I actually like to go on the practice court, maybe about four hours before the game, and and just kind of visualize the game a little bit, work out for about 30 minutes, get the blood flowing, think about some situations. And it's amazing what a workout on the practice court can do for me leading up to game time. So does that actually help you? Because obviously you play the game. Does that kind of get your blood flowing a little bit? Like you actually get ready for game yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, we, we don't have a team this year that I can basically just sit down and cross my legs and coach, okay? You know, we, we got to work the sidelines and we got to be ready. I got to make sure I stay inside the box. I got warned a couple of times, but I got to make sure I stay within that box. That box is a lot closer to the bench than what I'm used to. Uh, coach, do you remember your, your first game? Do you have any memories of your first game as, a, as an NBA head coach? Yeah, and we uh, played Charlotte. Uh, Don Nelson passed me the whistle at about 11 in the morning and told me, told the guys that I was going to be the next coach, and he resigned. And we played Charlotte that night, and fortunately we won and um, went on a pretty good run the rest of that year. Yes, I do remember my first game. It wasn't, I wasn't that nervous because, you know, we only had 18 games remaining that year, and I had functioned as the assistant head coach the entire season, which is equivalent to associate head coach on, college, on the college level. And that year, if I remember correctly, Coach Nelson, because of two separate surgeries, I think I coached 15 games as a head coach. So that experience... Uh, kind of calm some of my nerves. But, you know, I think like John Thompson, the old Georgetown coach said, you know, sometimes nerve, little nerves are good. And if you don't have them, you're probably not human. So I think all of us will have something going on inside of us tomorrow as, mu as well as we did in the exhibition game. But once the ball is thrown up, then it's, it's all basketball. Let's do a couple more questions, Coach. Anything else? How would you kind of prepare that? Yeah, I think Coach Nelson left me with a couple of one major thing where he was saying, Coach, don't oversaturate their brains. You know, give them the key elements and the shoot around, and but you got to let them get out there and play. You know, you you just can't you can't just you know, fry their brains. You got to leave some room for them to breed and just have a little fun on the court. And, you know, that's, that's what we're attempting to do uh, tomorrow night. These are kids. Um, like I told them, with this season, uh, they don't have to worry about the, the pressure's on me. The pressure's not on them, okay? And um, I was brought in here to do a job. And... Um, you know, they, they just need to go out and try to do the best job that they can do. But if something goes wrong, I, all the pressure's on me. If they turn the ball over, sure, I'm going to hold them accountable. But if they turn it over with a bad pass, then I have to teach them how to make a better pass in those situations. So um, they, they understand that. I just want them to enjoy this experience, enjoy the ride. I'm hoping that I'll get some grilled chicken with some brown rice and grilled asparagus. That's what I'm hoping for. So hopefully, um, if it doesn't interfere with her getting her hair done, <laughs> I'll, I'll get that. Okay? All right, thanks.